when to quit your job. Hi everyone, this is Kaden and welcome to our Monday Motivation again. Most of us want to escape the 9 to 5 red race. It's possible but you need to be mentally and financially prepared. So today, I will share with you what you need so that you can quit your full-time job. After I graduated from National University of Singapore, I've worked about 10 plus years as a corporate employee, about four and a half years in a statutory board or some people call it civil service, and the next five years in a very huge public listed transport company. After working 10 plus years, I left my job in May 2008. After I left my job, the global financial crisis came. Now I think back, if I knew that this crisis would arrive, I wouldn't have quit my job. Uh, but as I look back, I think uh, leaving my job is probably one of the best uh, decisions ever. I have decided to step down from my post and spend more time with my family. I do not fear the unknown. I will meet my new challenges head on and I will succeed. And I will laugh in the faces of those who doubt me. It's been a pleasure working with some of you. Actually, my last job, I think I'm quite happy there, partly because I have uh, two great bosses, uh, who is my general manager and my executive vice president. They really take good care of me. They gave me opportunities and they value my hard work. So I was really happy. But the biggest turning point is one day when I went out with my wife, and I still remember vividly, we were walking along the overhead bridge, crossing over to Marina Square. So I asked my wife, you know, we have been married for a couple of years, maybe it's time for us to start the family. And, and then there, there was like a 30 second of silence. And then after 30 seconds, my wife made this sentence. She said, but you only have time for work. Yeah, she said it softly, but inside my mind, it was really loud. That's when I have a big realization, right? I think I spent too much time at work. So what I did was I went back and then I articulated this to my, my boss and my boss boss that I really need to leave. If not, right, maybe you transfer me to another department. You know, I love learning and development. Please transfer me over to that department so that I can have some form of work-life balance. I could start a family. But unfortunately, I wasn't given the opportunity, so I have no other choice but to leave. After I leave, I, you know, then I have all the time in the world, right? Then I can start my family and so on. But, but there's always the reality side of things is, I mean, who is going to pay the bills, right? Even though I was investing at that point of time. So I realized that I still have to, you know, find a job. But instead of finding one, uh, why don't I just create one? So I realized that I have a passion in teaching. Uh, at least I got to know when I was doing all the side hustling when I was much younger and then I love investing. If I could put these two things together, why don't I just start my own company and create my own job? So I started a value investing academy teaching people about value investing and then I could have more flexible hours with my wife. So way back to May 2008, even though I left a job in a hurry right, of out of pressure, but at that point in time, I realized that I have some uh, some money which could last me maybe about two years, three years plus and, and that is probably uh, the amount of time I need to build a business. Uh, that, that was my assumption, uh, that was my first level of safety net. But of course the ultimate safety net was, was my wife again. Now I don't think I want to borrow 50k from her anymore but I did discuss with her that hey I'm going to quit, the worst case scenario is you have to take good care of me at least uh, for my stomach. I think with these two levels of so-called safety net, uh, I think I'm ready uh, to, to hand in my resignation. So in case any one of you, you are a bit pissed off because right now it's pandemic, your boss is stressing you or whatsoever, right? Um, before you hand in your resignation, don't do it out of impulse. And if you do, uh, make sure that you have some form of planning, uh, especially the financial side of things. Uh, when I left my job, in fact, the, the biggest feeling that I had was emptiness and I felt lost because I have, I have no idea what to do. I, I mean, what, what, what do I mean by starting a company? What, what does starting a company mean? So, so there is no textbook for me to follow. So what I did was I just follow my intuition. Yeah, and then everything is all try and error. How do I register a company? A, how do I start a bank account and so on? So everything is just try and error. Uh, as I look back, you know, is, is it really the right time to quit? 
uh, I, I would say it, it's, it's a question mark. Now, I remember there was this quote, right, uh, which goes something like, a entrepreneurship is jumping off the cliff and building the wings on your way down. So right now, as I look at this quote, I think it's a bit ridiculous. You, you jump off the cliff and then you try to build the, the wings on the way down. It's a bit ridiculous. But, but now, as I look back, there will never be a right time. Yeah, you can always say a year later, a day later, but, but when you make a choice, you just need to uh, take responsibility and then make the best out of it. So there's never a good time to quit. I quit. What? Michael, you have no idea how high I can fly. We've come to the end of this episode. See you again next week. And please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button. Stay safe, everyone. See you soon. Goodbye.